So this is our transmissibility curve. This kind of explains how I set is work. Everything above the line of one is amplified. Everything below the line of one is attenuated. And this is the frequency spectrum. So our isolators have a half hertz resonant frequency. You can see our peak there. That's where our, our isolators will amplify. If so, if you're sitting on something that's moving a half a hertz, ours will make it move more. Luckily, buildings typically don't move at half hertz, but the reason we want to have it have that low is because air isolators tend to have a resonant frequency of around two, three hertz. Typically, some are lower, some are higher. But what we do with our half hertz, we start removing vibration before they even start amplifying. So consequently, we can really reduce problems that typically occur within buildings around one to 10 hertz. We can really knock that down. So we're between 100 down to 10 times higher performance than typical air systems. Active systems try to emulate what we're doing. We just let physics do it. Consequently, we can actually outperform them for a couple other reasons as well, but they can't typically get down to the level of attenuation that we do. And so that gives us a distinct advantage there. Once you get down to the about five hertz or so, we're down minus 40 dB or about a factor of 100. And so that really allows us to provide way better performance and solve problems that other people simply cannot. If our isolators can't solve your problem, you're kind of out of luck, uh, especially for low frequency building vibrations. If you're having a problem one or two or three hertz, and this is a problem for people that have, say, an electron microscope, but they don't have any option besides going on the fifth, sixth floor of a building, and they can't have the option of going into a basement. The microscope manufacturers won't guarantee the noise floor. That's where we come in and we can solve the problem.